One of the key themes in Handmade Universe is reading the night sky and there are several items from the library's collections of astronomy, including two star maps that are very different in appearance but equally significant in their own ways. One is a celestial atlas by John Flamsted and it's the product of his life's work as the first royal astronomer at the Greenwich Observatory in England more than 300 years ago. And the other is a pocket-sized guide to the southern stars created by a self-taught astronomer called Mary Ackworth Orr after visiting Australia from Britain. John Flamstead's a, a fascinating character in his own right and, and he took it upon himself to try and enlarge the catalogue of known stars and he was able to do that partly through advances in optics by people like Isaac Newton who taught him at Cambridge and in the end his catalogue of stars um, tripled the number of recorded stars. Mm. Of course Flamstead's operating at Greenwich and he's looking at the northern sky so it wasn't much use to anyone travelling to Australia. Uh, like Mary. Yeah, she published under the, the pen name Emmy or because it was gender neutral. Yeah. It's meant to be for all stargazers. And you can see that even in the, the choice of language. I mean, uh, Slamstead's working in Latin, which is the language of scholarship of his day. But here you can see Mary has deliberately chosen English as a kind of democratising of Absolutely. knowledge in, in the language as well as the form. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean we saw comparisons to some of the smartphone apps that you mm. see today because this book was designed mm. so that you could have it in your pocket as you travelled, yes. pull it out and hold it up. I don't think you'd be attempting that with uh, some of the magnificent uh, maps That's right. that, that are based on Flamstead's observations. I really love the drawings yeah, that, that have been used to, to bring the constellations to life. Unfortunately he was something of a, of a perfectionist mm. and he died before he could complete the work to the standard that he wanted to publish. And so it, it fell to his widow, Margaret, uh, who was able to publish the volume in 1729. It's really moving to, to realise too that she died the year after this book was published. It's sad that neither of them were around to see how successful it mm. became. Volumes like this, as you said, very famous, mm. you know, in contrast to something like this lovely little pocket Star Atlas. Mm. There are fascinating connections and parallels between the production of each of these wonderful books.